Hey folks, welcome to Game of the Day from day four of the 2024 St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. So today we had the first uh, day of Blitz action for the event. Uh, so nine rounds of Blitz, round robin, all play all. Uh, so total of 45 games on the day, five games per round for nine rounds. So there are many, many fascinating games um, to, to choose from. The game of the day, I picked this one from Ferruja against Wesley So. Uh, just because there are a number of interesting moments and, and highlights from this uh, one game. So Bruja, of course, ended up having a great day, six and a half out of nine. And he ends up in the lead after this first day of Blitz. Wesley So, in fact, also had a great day of Blitz. Um, going into the uh, day, he was a bit behind Bruja in the standings. But Wesley actually had the best day out of anyone, scoring seven out of nine points. So he was also in great, great form. Uh, from today. So this game starts off as a, an Italian game. I believe this was uh, from the third round of the day. Frugia playing white. He goes for an early bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, d6. And uh, yeah, these days the Italian game, of course, uh, is very, very theoretical. A lot of times black is looking for an early g5 here. Wesley decides to uh, play a bishop a7, knight a3, and now g5, bishop g3, bishop to g4, bishop to b5, and Wesley castles. I don't know if castling is the right move here. H5 uh, might be an idea for black as well. And then maybe one day looking to castle queen side. But he decides to go king side. Perugia goes h3, bishop h5, knight to c4, knight to e7, bishop a4, c6. All this uh, is fairly normal. Bishop to c2, and now bishop to g6. Huge, huge blunder from Wesley, uh, which Perugia pounces on. The move knight takes d6. Just a fantastic uh, tactic spotted by Frugia. The point after queen takes d6 is he's taking on e5. That's the second pawn, hitting the queen and the knight on f6. The queen has to stay in touch with the knight, but now bishop to b3. And white is getting the piece back, and he's already won two pawns in the process. Um, so bishop g6 was uh, a huge, huge mistake. Apparently b5 here would have been fine for black. Because the point is with the bishop on h5, these tactics aren't working. Uh, after takes, black can take this one. And if bishop takes e5, queen takes e5. White is giving up too much material here. So knight e5, bishop takes d1. And black is going to be up a piece. So bishop g6, knight takes d6. Um, great tactical awareness from Ferruja. But then the game gets very, very interesting uh, from here anyway. So knight fd5, Wesley decides to give the piece back like this takes takes on d5 so white is only up one pawn here but he has a really nice position now d4 strong center uh black is weak in the king side as well rook to e8 and now bishop takes d5 very sensible decision from Ferruja just to simplify the position and leave black with a very bad bishop on a7 and now queen to a4 there's other moves for white as well like knight h2 for example looking for knight g4 knight f6 ideas um, this might have been an even even stronger way to play but Queen to a4, Frugia ends up grabbing a second pawn here after f6. Queen takes a5 uh, based on the idea that any kind of discoveries are going to be made with queen takes d5 check now that Wesley played f6. So bishop b4, white is now two pawns up. Queen to b5, knight to d2. And this is where the conversion process starts, but it ends up being not so easy. Um, rook b6, maybe queen e2 here was a better idea. Uh, with the point that if rook takes b2, winning back one pawn, white can play queen h5. And then h6 is falling, knight takes e4 uh, is happening as well. White would have a huge, huge attack here on the king side. Uh, but queen a5, Frugia uh, plays it uh, quite safe. Rook a6, and now queen to c7. Going for the endgame. So white is still two pawns up here in this endgame. And black really doesn't have um, any particular compensation here. But... Regardless, it ends up being surprisingly difficult for Ferruja to convert this one. Now, at this point, Wesley is in uh, heavy time pressure, down to 20 seconds. Ferruja has about a minute, goes knight to c5, hitting uh, the b7 pawn. But Wesley defends this one extremely uh, well, bishop c8, h5, and simply just not letting white uh, break through here. Kind of interesting, even though white's two pawns up, really hard to advance uh, his pawns after bishop to d7. Perhaps what white should have done somewhere around here was play f4. Now that he has okay, a huge advantage on the queen side, two extra pawns, maybe f4 looking to create some play on the king side with rook to f1 
and playing on both sides of the board. Principle of two weaknesses. Uh, definitely should be winning endgame for white, but yeah, he does have to find a plan to break through here. Uh, so rookie six, white could have definitely traded rooks here. That should be winning endgame two pawns up, but he decides to keep the rooks on the board. Knight to b6, bishop to c6, and now b5. Uh, actually, a big blunder from Ferruja. So he goes for bishop takes b5, knight takes d5. That's his idea uh, to trade pawns like this. But overlooks or underestimates the fact that black can play bishop takes b6. And if he takes on c6 like this, maybe this was his idea. Black has bishop takes c5. Surprisingly, black is getting away with this because it takes on b7. Then there's bishop a7. Black is keeping the extra bishop. White's pawns aren't promoting. If c7 here, then there's rook to c6. And white can get the piece back with uh, d takes c5, but black is holding a draw here. Rook takes c7, rook takes c5, um, both of these moves, and black is actually fine in the rook end game. So probably Ferruja underestimated this one, and now he's down to 10 seconds as well, and all of a sudden the position is no longer winning because black won back a pawn and got himself into an opposite color uh, bishop end game. So instead of b5, of course, white could uh, keep the two pawns up advantage with any safe move but at this point it's really not that easy actually um, to make progress engine points out knight a8 bishop b6 is one idea and then bringing the knight to c7 definitely not an easy maneuver uh, not an easy maneuver to find with just 10 seconds on the clock so b5 wesley grabs his chance with bishop takes b6 very nicely spotted bishop takes b5 and all of a sudden Ferruja has to try and win the game all over again of course with opposite color bishops on the board things are very drawish but Ferruja sets up a very nice uh trick here with rook to c5 wesley goes rook to e1 check at this point black should have just played king e6 king d7 and he's probably holding this uh despite being a pawn down he's got the blockade instead we see rook e1 check rook to b1 which looks very natural going after the b pawn uh, probably expecting bishop to c7 here and then black is totally fine uh, but Ferruja spots the utterly brilliant rook takes c6 uh, nice exchange sacrifice here after b takes c6 bishop to b4 white cuts off the rook from the b pawn now threatens b8 uh, b7 and b8 equals queen uh, so Wesley had to resign here as he's running out of time and no way to stop the pawn. If rook a1, then just b7 and the a8 square is covered. If rook to e1, then b7 and black gets there in time with the rook to e8, but there's bishop to d6 and black will have to give up the whole rook for the pawn and then white just has an extra piece in the end game. So Ferruja ends up getting it done uh, with this nice combo at the end, rook c6, bishop to b4. Um, but very fascinating, very fun game uh, to follow as he won it with the first combination, then Wesley shows this incredible defense, and then Ferruja had to win it all over again a second time and finds a nice trick to do so. Alrighty folks, that wraps up today's game of the day. Hopefully we'll see you back here for the next video. Take care.